Listen. So I think two of the biggest movies out of Sundance is the Zoomer-inspired Zola and the Grand Jury Prize-winning Minari. And I think both of these will still be talked about by this time next year. Let me explain. So Zola's based on a roughly a 144 to 148 Twitter thread that's been called a thodicy, a lesson in hoism. There's audio retellings of it on YouTube, fan trailers. There's an entire profile that was done by Rolling Stone. And while the movie is adapting that article and Zola's story, it really is a literal Twitter thread adaptation of a movie. From the sounds, the framing, the pacing, we've seen a lot of movies that try to showcase and tackle text messaging on screen. This movie just goes for it. It tells the tale of Zola, who was waitressing in Detroit when a sex worker named Stephanie befriends her, invites her on a Florida trip for work, and then you get this 90-minute odyssey. Now, A24 and Sony are distributing it, but um, I don't know how they're going to handle the MPAA with this. I think my hardest part was the montage with the penises. <laughs> <laughs> no one should have to look at those. So <laughs> But I say this because a lot of the older generation that was pulling up to the screenings were thinking that it was about the poet. It has nothing to do with the French writer because it's totally a story that Amy Zola could have written one century and a half ago. So I met this white bitch at Hooters in Atlanta. I was her waitress. In terms of casting, Taylor Page is a star. She's been in a couple of things dating back to a part in High School Musical 3, but she is the breakout in this. Like, casting directors, I appreciate y'all's work. I truly believe you deserve a category at the Oscars. So do your job and cast this woman right here. Don't pull another Lupita and let years pass before she gets her due. Riley Keough as Stephanie, um... Might be too good. Coleman Domingo plays the pimp who goes by X in two accents. And Nicholas Braun went from sky high to cussing Greg. And now he's Derek. And yeah, Derek is uh, pretty lost, I think, in life. Um, I think he's a vapor without a vape, you know? <laughs> <laughs> that said, this movie is nothing without Janisa Bravo. I, I wasn't the biggest fan of the previous movie she directed, which was also at Sundance a couple years ago. But having seen Zola twice... She absorbs you into this world. There's a certain basketball sequence where she plays with sound in order to make the new setting unsettling. At one point, she even switches perspective to another character, but because they used Reddit to tell their story, it changes the way the movie's being told. And she has an entire lookbook that I wish I could grab for the movie since the technology and culture of that time from 2015, it's already considered a period piece. That said, not everything is an upvote for me in this movie. I, I do think the movie still needs an ending. It is taken to be in a parallel universe in a sense with everyone's names being altered. But considering the ending to the real story and how the movie, you know, decides to end, I do feel they could have had just a bigger conclusion. But that, that's just my personal opinion. I'm still very, very happy James Franco didn't direct this. And I'm even happier that Riley Keough was cast over Bella Thorne. <laughs> to make sure that I think there is a version of this movie directed by someone else where Taylor and Riley are swapped and it was very important to me in my body to make sure that Taylor was what I needed her to be which was some version of myself and that Riley was a version of a nightmare. <laughs> Now this one comes from A24 and Plan Brad, so the hype was through the roof. Now most of us were calling it Minari throughout the entire festival, but director Lee Isaac Chung mentioned that it's actually pronounced Minari. My grandma and I would go down to this creek below a pond and she planted Minari. It's based on the director's childhood as the movie follows a Korean-American family who sets up a farm in Arkansas. And while I think people left the screening loving Alan Kim and his cowboy outfit the best, I'm not gonna lie, this is, a, this is an ensemble. The entire cast is spectacular. Steven Yoon has been an international star from all the stuff he's done in the States to burning to delivering one of the best subtitle Easter eggs in bongs, Okja. Han Yuri as the mother is an anchor and cements the theming of the movie, especially with the confrontation she has in the second half. But the grandma, Yeon Yu Jung looked at Nai Nai and said, give me the mantle of best grandma of the year. And I'm saying this because right before our screening started, they like hyped her up a lot that the grandma was going to be like really good in the movie. And I mean, like they overhyped her and it's still delivered. So this is me hyping her up to you. But what was really wonderful was every single actor here was really engaged in the process. And it really felt like we were just living and they just happened to be um, filming and that was really wonderful. 
I know it's cliche to boast about its authenticity because everyone's just trying to do that nowadays, but the fact that Lee Isaac and Steven are cousins, I think, adds a lot to it. After the premiere, they talked about how both of these guys, both of these men, were hugging their fathers in tears. I was in tears. And then came the notes Lee Isaac had. Working with A24 and Plan B, uh, what I love about those guys is that they are really always on the forefront, I feel, of pushing something new in cinema. And they were encouraging me, hey, let's make it more Korean is what uh, is the note I got from my first draft of the script. I'm sure most of you heard that buffoonery from certain Oscar voters who believed Best Picture needed to be an American film, even though none of the A's and AMPAs or the words Best Picture stand for America. What I'm curious about is how they're going to label this movie, because last year at Sundance, they premiered The Farewell, and that went all the way to the Globes, but that was considered a foreign film even though it was in the U.S. dramatic competition. And U.S. plays a big part because The Farewell wasn't just referring to the ending, but the first goodbye when she moved to America. And Minari, this is an American family as well. They're moving to Arkansas from Cali. They're running an American farm on American soil. They're working with the Bible Belt community in, in an awkward way, but progressive nonetheless. And I've never really understood the whole se habla ingles only in America, considering that our own states including Arkansas, originate from an indigenous language that's not English. So I think it's time some of y'all redefine what, what makes something an American film. Because American doesn't just mean you. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'm curious to know your thoughts about this. Uh, like I said, we're going to be covering more and more of these individually. But we do have the whole big must-watch Sundance video if you just want to sit down for like 15 minutes and see the stuff from this festival that you would... Um, maybe you want to have on your radar we also have a much longer intercut podcast episode that i've mentioned uh if you want to see us cover practically every category that was there at sundance uh the next festival that we have up is south by southwest but i'm curious to know your thoughts on all these things uh again zola i think dude like you know when you go to a film festival it's a lot of people who you know know about the film festival or can afford to go to the film festival but like the public has yet to see these movies and and i think me and is going to be like just critically praised all around but i'm very curious to see how the younger generation not just the younger generation but but, but normal people on twitter who don't like write for a living uh what they think about zola because i i think it's gonna it's gonna be huge uh we all know hollywood's are scavengers and they don't really give a crap about foreign films but right now they're hot and if they can get anything that's labeled korean oh man they're gonna take it so if you are a korean filmmaker this is a psa right now bleed them dry pull a marty scorsese and take that 150 mil take whatever you can because right now with streaming services i mentioned this in the past everyone is just playing the content game trying to make as much as possible if you are a filmmaker if you have any ideas jump on that and for the goofy ass i just got to say this right now uh especially after the oscars and stuff i, I had a lot of people telling me that 1917 should have won because that was the most american film it's British, you fools. But I guess it had war, so they consider it American. Other than that, I'm very curious what you guys think about these movies once they come out. I believe they are both scheduled to be coming out in the summer, unless they push them for, like, awards reasons. But I'm curious to know your thoughts. Other than that, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll send you a six-pack of water from the mountains.